Cooks house. All right, we got a lot of football stuff to get into in the middle of basketball season. We got guys in all-star games, media availability from Daniel Holgerson. So let's get to it. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, daily podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Ainsworth, here to break down all things Cougs. If you're a U of H fan or just a hater can't stop by, please be sure to subscribe down below. That way you can get the latest on the Cougs each and every day. We appreciate you making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. Now, uh, welcome back to the YouTube channel. We are at about 530 subscribers. That number is going up, up, up. So make sure you subscribe down below because we are giving away stuff at every 250 mark uh so we just gave away some stuff to rusty shout out to rusty for that um she just re- they just received uh some sparkle he just received some sparkle gear um and things like that also giving away a lot of their stuff to a local charity shout out to rusty for that one we're gonna do another giveaway at 750 so don't be worried make sure to subscribe so we get there and then comment down below so we know who to give stuff to give us a nice little upvote so we know you're in um if you can't if you have to listen to this you're like i don't know what to say uh tell us uh, tell us when you put cheese on us out. Now, what I will say is that we have a lot of football stuff to get into today. There will also be a short bonus episode out probably around the same time you listen to this about the Wichita State basketball game, a little summary of that. And then also there will be a full-length episode uh, talking about the Temple basketball game of the weekend. Lots of Locked on Cougs content coming your way. Today we've got three segments, though, all about football in this episode. The first segment is going to be looking at Clayton Tune and Tank Dell and how they've been handling the stress in Mobile, Alabama at the Senior Bowl. Um and frankly, the answer is very well. We're going to get into why in a second. The second segment is going to be looking at a little bit about what Dana Holgerson said during his media availability this week. He was available on the afternoon of signing day. And so there was kind of like a little bit of fireworks on signing day. If you want to go back and check Juwan Gaston, he signed. We had a whole little deal with Locked On Podcast Network about that. So you can go back and check the catalog for that one as well. Um, but Dana had a lot of cool things to say. And I want to take out some nuggets that I thought were particularly important. And then the third segment, we'll get who played for the Houston Cougars in the Shrine game. We had Derek Parrish playing tight end. And we also had uh, Javarius Owens and Art Green playing defensive back. So a lot of Cougars all over the country playing various all-star games. But first, we had Clayton Toon playing in uh, playing in the – getting ready for, I should say, to play in the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. We have a clip from Sports 790, that Sports 790, uh, and they actually got to sit down and talk to him for a second after practice. So let's listen to what Clayton had to say. Joined by Clayton Toon of the U of, U of H Cougars out here at the Senior Bowl. Uh, what did you make of your work today? I thought it was a good day. Um, there were some things I you know, need to improve on, um, clean up some of the reads. Um, just really come out here and know what I'm doing so I don't have to think and I can just react and play ball. Um, I thought it was a good day overall. It's got to be a little hard, right? Like new coaching staff, new players, new teammates, kind of having to adjust all this, right? It is a little bit, but it's not. I mean, it's still ball. So when you get out here, it's it's the same situation for everybody. So everyone's kind of going through that same learning curve. But um, the more you're out here, the more you're with the guys, the more you learn each other, and um, the easier it becomes. You, I know you've been able to talk to a bunch of different people. And, I mean, you're getting pulled in a million different <laughs> directions. What's what's the big thing that most uh, you know scouts and coaches have have told you that maybe you need to work on this week? Um, you know, just continue to operate and, um, you know, get in and out of the huddle. Um, you know, plan from under center is something that's new to me. So just continue to work on the, the footwork from under center and, um, you know, really just overall um, knowledge of, of, you know, just situational football and all that type of stuff. I guess one advantage is you got Tank here. So a little familiarity there, right? Yeah. No, it's awesome having Tank here. He's my roommate. So we get to hang out a lot outside of scheduled time. And uh, it's definitely good having him out here. After this, what's what's your plan? Go somewhere, work out, and start to prepare for the draft, that sort of thing? Yeah, so I'm going to go out to Orange County, California, and train with Jordan Palmer. Uh, I'm going to go out there, um, just you know, continue to throw, lift, speed training, um, mental training, all that type of stuff. One more thing on a side note. I saw the schedule came out for U of H and the Big 12 now. Is that a little weird seeing they're playing the Big 12 now? A little bit. I think it's uh, I think it's probably long overdue. I'm um, kind of sad I missed it. It would have been fun to have played in that that conference. But, no, it's pretty cool. Happy for him. Clayton, too. Thanks for the time, man. Yeah, appreciate it, man. So, Clayton mentioned there at the end uh, – the coolness about seeing the U of H in the Big 12. But what I think is interesting about that, and thank you for Sports 790 for permission to use the video. Um, first of all, you heard that the big adjustment for Clayton and mechanical stuff is all going under center, which I think is 
projectable if you look at the way Houston has played offense for the entirety of his time there, right? Um, but otherwise, what I think is notable is like, that seems to be it. And if you listen to people like talk about him from afar and watching the senior bowl and stuff like that, that seems to be kind of consensus is he's actually fairly ready for what's coming in the NFL at a lot of levels. Um, he said he's working with Jordan Palmer in orange County. Now the dates on that look like per Jordan Palmer's information, uh, February 24th and 5th. Now I think for guys of Clayton tune stature, it'll actually be more like a full week length kind of thing. Um, but that's the only availability that Palmer's got until, uh, right before the draft happens. And so obviously that's a chance for him to work out before coming back to Houston for a pro day. Uh, Jordan Palmer has worked with elite level quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, right? Like top end, top end guys. I don't think he just, you know, takes anyone obviously. <laughs> and also like it's clearly top end guys. So I would imagine that's kind of what Clayton Toon wants to emulate, right? He's going to go with Palmer, work with Palmer to kind of get some of the same mechanical footwork as those guys did. I mean, Trevor Lawrence ran in a very similar fashion, a very spread offense to, at Clemson. And then it's going to the NFL and you got to be ready for the traditional under center kind of stuff. Who else would you work with other than Jordan Palmer? Um, <laughs> I think the interesting thing is though, Jordan Palmer's like tagline is more than mechanics, right? And so it'll be interesting to hear from Clayton Toon as the uh, progress continues as to what exactly they're working on um, while they're out there. I would say that it sounds like just in a week of senior bowl practice, Clayton Tune has moved up and most draft boards form a formerly like end of six, seven round or unwrapped pick. He is still a, a day three draft. It looks like, but pretty solidly in the four, uh, fifth round on most boards. Um, everyone talks about how he's got a great build, good kid, great arm. And he seems to be a desirable backup quarterback almost right away. Right? Like not a guy that's going to cause a lot of kerfuffles, but will come in and, able to run the second team offense, able to give you a scout look at practice. And if you need to come in and lead a couple drives, so your starters now in the bum ankle, or whatever, I think teams feel confident that he can do those kinds of things. He's got the right uh, physical tools and things like that. I could see him having the case Keenum type career, not just because they both went to Houston and the games are fairly different, but because they both are the kinds of guys people want in their locker rooms. I mean, Clayton, has been criticized as being dry, but you don't want a lot of frills from the back of quarterback, right? And um, they also are very good at what they do. They do different things, he and Case do, but they are very good at what they do. And I think it's interesting to see him continue that legacy uh, as Case has done for so, so long now. Also, for what it's worth, both played for Dana at Houston. The other guy that's been getting a lot more firework type of praise, though, has been Tank Dell. And I thought about, like, how do I put this into words? But I got a clip from... Uh, Mr. Mosier over at Locked On Cowboys. Uh, he's down there reporting right now. Um, that's Marcus Mosier. And I, I'll make sure I got any of that right. Uh, but Marcus Mosier from Locked On Cowboys. And he gave us access to this video as well. Now, I have to point out here that uh, it's quite a good video out of him from behind the scenes with Tank Dell at Senior Bowl practice. Let's watch what Tank Dell has been doing. So as we see here, a lot of great separation in routes, even if it's off the jump. Let's see this happen here. Boom, right off the bat. That's a couple yards of separation. Oh, plants in the ground, comes away. A guy can't keep up with him. Again, this is Tank Dell at Senior Bowl week. Big time, big time week for a guy like him. Hoping to move up the draft stock. Separation out of the break there. Clearly running away from defenders. Even and leave him coming back. The comeback route's great. Great vertical to come get the ball. Boom. In and out. Stacks just runs away from defenders there. I'll put him on quarterback. In and out. Boom. In and out of the break. Makes the guy fall. Oh, put it on him, quarterback. A couple, couple of those happen. Uh, in and out of the breaks. Even and leave him. Behind the defense. Oh, just put it on him. All right, so... Tank does a great job in creating separation throughout the entire two days of practice. He missed day three of practice. Um, it's, you know, why why go full contact if his draft stock is rising? Now, I have to say that you know, the pro football focus folks have been following this, obviously, very closely. They're very tied to the draft, right? Pro football focus. And they um, said that he's had as good a week as anyone there at the wide receiver position. The clips that have gone viral, though, um, said that he is the best wide receiver there at creating separations. As I saw in that clip, he is really, really good at 
going in and out of a break at full speed. And it's hard for a defensive back to obviously do that because they don't know where he's going. They can't do that at full speed, right? That's the advantage to the receiver. And what makes playing corner so hard, right? Um, ESPN is still having him in the second or third round. Specifically, Luke Winstall has him as a second or third round pick, so a day two pick. Um, I think a lot of which round that is depends on what high end the six four type guys go in the first round um, because Tank is as quick and athletic as athletic and, and long armed as anyone, but he is just you know five nine five ten. I think he weighed in a buck eight a buck sixty eight, and that's not a giant. Now Deshaun Watson has done it, and that's a really high bar to put on somebody. But he also has that kind of quickness and athleticism. So we'll be following him throughout the process as well. Tank has not been as friendly with talking to folks thus far. Um, but he is the kind of guy that uh, that is performing the field in a way that shows out. And so thank you again to Mark's Motion for letting us have access to that one. Um, all of that said, you know, that's a pair of guys that are future NFL players, former Cougs. I want to talk a little bit about what Dana Holgerson had to say about the current Cougs or the upcoming Cougar football season. So I'll do that in the second segment because first we need to talk about our buddies at FanDuel. Now, FanDuel is the number one sports book in America and they are a new sports betting partner here at Locked On. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that makes betting on sports fun and easy. You can download FanDuel so you get uh, betting on Super Bowl 57 right away with a no sweat first bet. You get to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown and more. Now, I've been saying the entirety of this first week that they continue to have the spread of the Super Bowl as less than two points. And that is since I'm taking the Eagles across the board. Channel View's own Jalen Hurts, obviously playing quarterback there, is really, really important. Patrick Mullins being a little hobbled also is. I also think it's worth pointing out, though, that my uh, more fun prop bet kind of pick here has been Dallas Goddard. Uh, we saw what Kansas City did in covering a pair of strong whiteouts. You've heard me say this a couple times this week. But... In covering two wideouts, they left the tight end open a lot against Cincinnati. Why would they not do that with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and Jalen Hurts? We also know Jalen Hurts loves to use the tight end, Dallas Goddard being the best among them. And so it feels like Dallas Goddard for plus 190 on an anytime touchdown. Well, it's not like a giant increase in cash. It feels pretty safe. And so that's what I'm going to say is my prop bet. I'm going to tell you to do it at FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid for your winnings instantly. Uh, join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, so in the middle here, I want to talk a little bit about what Dana had to say about the future uh, Houston football Cougar season, uh, Houston Cougar football season. I missed some of my words there. Um, but I thought it was interesting that there's a lot of hype in this media availability about a great signing class coming in, some top end skill players, um, a lot of big name transfers from big name schools. Um, big, big moment for Dana on, on Wednesday signing day. And his first several questions, he directed all answers to we need more facilities the practice facility is great he said the indoor facility is great um the outdoor practice facility is great they've done some good stuff with tdecu but it sounds like he wants more there and then he kept going back to the idea of a football ops building and now there's pales in comparison to the big 12 and to be fair to dana and, and i think people kind of heard that it's always oh, already making excuses and there may be some of that there but i think what he's saying is something accurate the money put into the football ops building at the university of houston is far less than it is at UT Austin or Baylor or TCU or Oklahoma State or Oklahoma. Like all of those places have put more money into their program. And he's saying to compete, they're going to need the same, right? They got Mikhail Harrison Pilot this time around, a four star top end recruit, all those kinds of things, because he has ties to the U of H, right? He's a legacy. He's even said he wants his kids to come to the University of Houston, right? They got uh, several years ago, Ed Oliver, top ranked D lineman to ever come through, all those kinds of things, because he was from Houston, wanted to stay home, right? They aren't haven't been nailing guys and getting guys to come in because of their facilities. And I think it's worth pointing out there's a number of Big 12 schools that do exactly that, right? Like if you go through Waco, it's like, why would you ever pick the city of Waco over the city of Houston? They're both in the Big 12. They both have explosive offenses. Like, why would you ever pick that moving forward? Have you, have you seen 
the stadium? Have you seen the facilities? Have you seen, like, it still smells like a new car on the inside of some of that stuff, right? Like, the entirety of these programs are built on comparing, measuring against one another, the facilities. And so when Dana Holgerson says, after having played in the Big 12 or coached in the Big 12 when he was at West Virginia or when he was on staff at Texas Tech and Oklahoma State, he says that the facilities are not up to snuff. He's not just saying that. Now, I understand when a fan will say, like, you know, you're nodding right now, like, I would like to go watch a winning team play before I send money that way, right? That's the yin and yang of this. That's the chicken and the egg, which comes first, which comes second. Uh, and Dana can control one of those, not the chicken and the egg, but Dana controls one of those, right? And so I get why that's the response. But I, I want to say he's not wrong here, right? Like, not everyone's going to spend the money that UT Austin spends. And I'll argue that where is winning a program in the last several years as UT Austin has been, but they spent a lot more money on their football ops building than Houston has spent on theirs. They spent a lot more money on uh, the stadium there in Austin than Houston has spent on TDECU, right? Same goes for Oklahoma. Same goes for Kansas State. Same goes for TCU, right? Like across the board, Houston spent a lot less money on their program. Now, a lot more money is about to come in. Big 12 contracts are a real deal, right? Those are big things. It's just where does that money get distributed after the fact and what kind of fundraising can they bring? Now, Dana wasn't all pessimistic. In fact, he was fairly optimistic in looking at their roster with the exception of one position group. So I think it was interesting that he pointed out that they have some of the best wide receivers in the country because we talked once upon a time. I think it's like on its way to becoming wide receiver. You You got athletic uh, in Dana's word freaks <laughs> like uh, Matthew Golden or Mikhail Harrison pilot. Um, you also, he en enjoys having this quarterback depth chart battle. You got Lucas Coley coming as a transfer a year ago. Donovan Smith coming as a transfer this year. And, after he talked about some growth that Coley had over the course of the season, like how does that translate to on-field battle? Um, he also pointed out he'd like to add another quarterback at some point to continue to create some competition there. And he also cited, you know, if you watch NFL football, the San Francisco 49ers last week got to their fourth quarterback and needed one more. Like the reality of getting hit by big pack, uh, power five division one uh, defensive lineman is your likelihood of needing that second, third, fourth option at quarterback only increases. Right now, that is important, and I think Dana is pointing out that like competition brings up the best of everyone. That's always a good thing to have more guys. And I am interested to see and watch in the spring game, which Duarte announces April seventh. Um, I'm interested to watch how that battle plays out. I would also, <laughs> if I'm being blunt. I would also imagine that bringing Iman Agave is an uh, indicator they're going to run the ball more. And we've talked back and forth several times that I think that leans the offense into the Texas Tech transfer Donovan Smith's hands. Um, and then you get some 11, 12 personality. You have three receivers at a time. You can run three, all everything receivers at a time. Um, it, it's really, really an, an interesting offense. Said to be an interesting offense. Um, I, I think the interesting thing about that, besides just the offense being interesting itself, is that you know, you could keep your quarterback clean with new big guys. You could, you know, not worry so much about quarterback competition if you were firmer in the run game with new big guys. You bring in a new offensive line coach to work with new big guys. We talked yesterday in our recruiting talks, or in that episode yesterday, two episodes came out yesterday, um, about this idea that, truthfully, the UH is still missing the influx of offensive line. They got some defensive guys, but the influx of offensive linemen that you would have thought it needs to play in the Big 12. Um, you know, I, I think there's par part of me wants to say that they have the entire starting five returning from a year ago. You'd hope that between the development last season and the development, you know, that Nagave had while he was at Tulane. I mean, they went from two and 10 a year ago to a Rose Bowl. What was that? Cotton Bowl victory over USC this season. Um, you'd hope that that was all predicated in the run game. So you'd hope that that would translate to a run game in Houston. That's kind of the same growth. Um, you also have, again, the five returning starters means you have game experience. Uh, they played Kansas and Texas tech, and they played that two lane team. They played some strong competition last season. I would say uh, relative to the American, you got to play a handful of teams in the American athletic conference. So like East Carolina was not super close or whatever. Right. Um, but I, I also, I hedge and wonder, um, how many offensive linemen Houston can realistically add in the, I keep saying May, because that's when the signing would start, but I guess I could start talking to people in April. 
after spring ball's over and you have some guys that are disgruntled with how spring ball went in the red zone spots, right? Um, Dana has said several times that they need that. Um, and several, you know, I could re- riddle off a handful of quotes, but several different times he reiterated that on Wednesday's media availability. And I think the importance of that is something we're all seeing, right? The idea that you're going to walk into the Big 12 and have a inexperienced or new or young or all of the above quarterback and be flying through a power five conference the first time with a bunch of linemen that have limited power five experience is worrisome. I think Patrick Paul's a pro, but he's one. And truthfully, if they could find a left tackle to move him from left to right, they'd be a lot better off. And so we'll see what kinds of guys they bring in. They did bring uh, Garth, uh, Jalen Garth in from UT Austin. So he is one guy transferred in one of the two new offensive linemen they have going into the spring. Uh, he actually transferred last summer and then was ineligible to play last season. Uh, so it'll be ready for spring ball. And so we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, but on the, on the whole, I would understand that worry. I understand that concern. And I thought it was interesting that Dana Holgerson was very open and upfront about it, right from the jump. The other interesting thing, this was actually early in the press conference, but um, that I thought was everyone's making a big deal out of West Virginia because Houston plays West Virginia at home on a Thursday night, primetime TV. They got a bye week the week before. And so you think theoretically like, okay, like this is a big chance to show off. He's going to want to rub it into his old school. And all. and he was very quick to dismiss that because <laughs> as he pointed out, yes, he was the head coach of West Virginia, but he was on staff at tech and he was on staff at Oklahoma state. And he like, he's got experience all over Texas. And the thing he pointed out that was cooler about the schedule is not getting to play West Virginia at home. That's a him thing. But for all of you, us, you and I, they play seven of the Texas schools. We get, you know, coffee room trash talk with seven different state of Texas schools next season. Now, some of that's because they play like UTSA in the preseason and rice will be again. They probably play forever in the non-conference, but, um, that's really impressive to fit into your schedule, right? To get to play UT Austin, to get to play Baylor, to get to play Tech, to get like all these uh, TCU, right? TCU is how they open Big 12 conference play. Like that's important in and of itself because it gets you and I invested. We get to go rub it in our buddies' faces that, hey, you lost the Cougs. How's that taste, right? Those kinds of things. And I thought that was really, really important for him to point out because I had certainly jumped on the idea that West Virginia is going to be a really, really important one. Now, in the third segment, I want to talk a little bit about how Derek Parrish and Art Green and Gervais Owens all played in the Shrine Bowl. So let's jump on in. All right, but before we jump in to talk some about the Shrine Bowl and the Shrine Bowl All-Stars, let's talk some about Built Bar. Now, Built Bar is the fav- my favorite one of these reads we do because... Frankly, it's the one I've been using for the longest. Bilt Bar is a great tasting protein bar option for you trying to get in shape in the new year. 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, just 4 grams of sugar, all your favorite macronutrients as far as the levels go, and all kinds of great flavors like brownie batter and churro, uh, all kinds of puffs, a little bit softer. Uh, great, great flavors. You can now find them in four packs at Walmart or in larger 12 packs at your local Sam's Club if that's more your vibe. My flavor recommendation is the uh, coconut almond because I'm more of an almond joy kind of guy and they taste almost exactly the same because every single built bar is covered in real chocolate. Yes, real chocolate, 130 calories, just four grams of sugar, 17 grams of protein. Go find that at your local Walmart or Sam's Club today. All right, so in the third segment here, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Shrine Bowl. Now, the Shrine Bowl itself if you paid attention to it, was not the most exhilarating of college all-star games or bowl games or anything like that. 12-3, to West Side won, uh, which was notably not where the Houston Cougars played. All three Houston Cougars were on the East team. Derek Parrish, Art Green, and Javarius Owens all played for the East team, which kind of threw me for a loop for a second. I kind of think of Houston's for a West place, although it's kind of an Eastern half of Texas. I don't know whether they draw lines. Anyway, what I do think is interesting is uh, we got to see Derek Parrish play some tight end fullback H-back. Looks like the position he's projecting himself for in the NFL. And honestly, he didn't look out of place at all. The offense was obviously fairly stagnant, but he had a catch for seven yards and did a decent job blocking when it was his turn to get in there and block. Um, Javarius Owens and uh, Art Green Didn't have any interceptions, but also didn't have crazy stat lines, which if you're a corner and safety is actually kind of a good thing. If you think about it, that means they're not throwing your way too, too terribly much. Um, 
what I think we need to take away from this game, though, is that Derek Parrish did win uh, the Pat Tillman Award, which I'm reading this to be sure it exemplifies a player with intelligence, sportsmanship, and service. Now, I think that we love seeing those kinds of things and Houston Cougars represent in that way because that's the kind of stuff and that's the kind of character we're bringing in and pulling out of the program. That's the kind of name that Houston has as carrying around the NFL. So I think Parrish has a decent NFL career ahead of him. And I think at, at least one of the two DBs will as well, just playing the odds there, right? Um, really, really cool award for Derek Parrish to win earlier in the week. Um, it wasn't actually the most ridiculous tweet I saw about him though. Um, I saw someone listing off measurables and things like that about Paris this week because I think he wowed a lot of guys, missed so much time hurt in his senior season, obviously. And um, Shane Coughlin uh, and Bruce Feldman, college football, tweeted out that he impressed them by running a 48540, or, or sorry, 45840. Pretty strong, pretty strong. 426 pound power clean, 674 pound back squat, 425 pound bench. Pretty strong for a lot. I mean, lineman, but like pretty strong, pretty strong. 21 inch neck and ate 110 ounces of meat in one sitting. Derek, if you hear this, we need to have a long conversation at some point about the 110 ounces of meat you had in one sitting. <laughs> Derek, if you hear that, you can find me at Painsworth 512. If you want to talk about eating a lot of steak in one sitting, you can find me also at Painsworth 512. It's P A I N S W O R T H 512 and all your social media handles. I'd be happy to talk all things Houston Cougar football, basketball, Houston Rockets, Astros, Texans. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of D'Amico Ryan's as a head football coach. I got Sneaker Wall. We can talk Jays. We can, I'm not really an Adidas guy, I guess. We know whatever you'd like on Twitter. You can find me at Twitter on Twitter at Painter512. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Locked on Kooks today. If you're looking for a second listen of the day, let me recommend Locked on Big 12. It's a conference we're heading into in college football. And as soon as the college football next season, I guess we're heading in all sports, but next college football season, we will be in the Big 12. So go check out Josh at, college, at Locked on College uh, at Locked On Big 12, I should say, for the latest on the conference. The schedule came out this week, and he's doing a great job breaking all of those down. So go check him out as well. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Locked On Cougs, the Proud Member Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Go Cougs!